Welcome back to MVM. Today we are going to give you our top 10 for each of us most anticipated games of 2020. And we realized that we're smack dab in the middle of February. Yeah, well, it gave us some time to kind of like take a look at everything that was coming. Mm -hmm. Just to do this earlier, I, would you have been able to do it in December? Mm -hmm. I think we've learned quite a bit in the last month. And there's a, half. a lot of games that have been announced. Of course, there's going to be new games because this weekend is the New York Toy Fair. Yeah, I yeah. know a lot of companies are going to be announcing games there. But we've already seen a couple games kind of trickle out. That they've kind of pseudo announced. I'm sure one of those games will be on one of our lists. But <laughs> today we're going to give you our top tens for each of us. That's 40. That's 40 games. Yeah, we're going to try to keep it really, really quick and succinct. So pay attention. <laughs> we might have some crossover along the way. Yeah. Are we like um, the, mi probably. the Micro Machines guy? We're going to do it that fast? Yes. How quickly we can get that? It's going to be a contest. Man, Who would... can do it the quickest? <laughs> I like that. I like that. All right. So, Ryan, we're going to start with you. Before we get into your top 10, mm -hmm. tell me how you chose the games and then spit off your number 10. So I chose a couple of different things factored into my top 10. Of course, how excited am I? But I always tend to look at the designers that I'm most excited about first. I'll actually go to their BGG page or follow them and see maybe what if they've already announced something that's coming out for this year. And then that's kind of where I'll start my search because there are a few designers out there and you're going to see them on my list that are just knock out of the park. I guarantee I'm going to love their games. So beyond that, I actually have a quite a mix of games on here. You'll see what I'm talking about okay. because my number 10 is Deckscape Duel Pirate Island, which is kind of crazy and out there. Now, that is. we've played some of these Deckscape games and these yeah. are like the es escape rooms or the unlocks or the exits. What's different about this or why I'm excited about it is because it is a dual version. It is two teams competing to go through these different puzzles and that spin off in different directions. And it's like, it's all scored and you're trying to like be the first to solve your little mystery. I've never seen an unlock or exit that's, or anything like that, that like that's competitive. Like this yeah. is not a cooperative one. I wouldn't be surprised if that spun off of, I've seen people at conventions actually take an exit game and an exit game and both play in separate sections, starting at the same time competing see, with one another. Yeah, Wasn't there that one that you, you start off in teams? And I won't say anything there more than that. There is an unlock where you have teams yeah. together, but I think this is like... This sounds more competitive. competitive. That this one you want to eventually be together in that right, one, no, but yeah. it didn't feel that way at first. I love okay. that idea. Yeah, this That's is really super 100% cool. competitive. Cool. It's very interesting. I like it. You'd have to find a, you know, a pretty good-sized group or groups to do that, but... Yeah. You could probably do like two-on-two two or I something. I guess you could do two-on-two. Yeah. Two. I've actually done a real escape room that way, where they have the escape room set up so there's mirror escape rooms and groups go in and you can actually see each other, so you're like oh, meddling cool. it a little bit. It's interesting, cool. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. My, ready for my type, uh, my number Are you going to talk yeah, about well, how you did it? about why you picked. So, interestingly enough, uh, what Ryan said about designers, this is the first time I've ever used a similar sort of thing. And I think that speaks to how long we've all been playing games yeah, because course. you start to trust certain things. Mm -hmm. I did it with some publishers, but I also did it with some mm -hmm. designers. Uh, however, that is not the first one on my list. The first one on my list, I put it at 10 because I felt like a bit of a cheat because I've played this several times already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but it's not coming out until this year. And that is Dwellings of Eldervale. Yeah, this is yeah. a game we had a chance to play last year. Uh, we have some content on it. I really, really like this game. I still like this game, and I cannot wait to see sort of the full production version of it. In fact, yeah. that's one of the things I think we start to experience here is we see so many prototypes, even the nice prototypes. I can't wait to see what they look like when they ultimately come out. And yeah. this game has a lot going on for it. If you haven't seen it, it's from Luke Laurie and Breaking Games. And it's got a lot of the same sort of things that I liked about Energy Empire yeah. uh, and what Luke Laurie does in his, a lot of his games. But... Had a lot of fun with it. I just want to see that final product. All right. So I was very cognizant of not picking games that I knew were going to be on Kickstarter in 2020, but not deliver into 2021. Mm -hmm. So there are like four games, like Aridia, Dark Ages, mm -hmm. Ankh, and Kemet. Did you guys know there's a new version of Kemet? I did. I saw that. Yeah. But it's not till 2021. All four of those would 100% be on my list. But I was trying to stay in 2020. Mm -hmm. So just like you guys, I picked designers that I like. I picked companies and publishers that I knew were going to deliver really good components. Uh, so my first one is, this could easily be my number one. And that's what, it's your the, 10? It's my number 10. It's Marvel. And I don't want to talk about Marvel all the time, but this is the story version of Marvel. This is going to kind of change things up a little bit, but it's going to be a campaign. And I've heard, now this may be a rumor, but I've heard it's going to be Hydra. 
oh, is the first campaign that you're going to fight against. I'm super excited for that. I'm excited for any of the Marvel content. I'll just leave it at that, but this is going to be around Gen Con. So it's after all these small expansions and small little uh, villains you're going to fight. So. Now you've got my gears turning about how that theme could play out in a story campaign. I'm, I mean, I, this is a game that I'm going to play through the life cycle of sure. the game. So mm -hmm. it, I can constantly keep this on my list, but I want to keep it high uh, so I can get some other really good games uh, down the line. Very cool. Ten. Yeah, to your point, I mean, Wonderlands War started on my list, and then I went and checked the campaign, and I was like, oh, it's 2021, even though, because it's, you know, oh, yeah. there's a lot of production for that game. I was thinking about that one, too. So, uh, for me, I, I obviously started with the Kickstarters that I've already backed, that I'm waiting on. Yeah. Um, and then and then from there, there's just things that I've been keeping an eye on and, and throughout, but it just that's a good segue into what my number 10 is, because I think it might have been on my anticipated list for last year, too, because it was supposed uh -oh. to deliver last well, year. Well, Jeremy's had one on the last couple Brazil. of years. We'll see if it's <laughs> right, on this right. time. Tang Garden. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's coming yeah. very soon, Don't right? I, I, I saw an update from Thundergriff saying that it was going, that it's stateside and custom stuff, and so it's going to be getting to the shipping partner, and that I'm guessing I'll have it in the next month or so, hopefully. So fingers crossed. Very cool. All right, All right number nine. My number nine is uh, a Kickstarter that was that last year. Uh, we actually did a preview for it, delivering this year. It's called Waste Nights Second Edition. Now, a game like this doesn't mm. always appeal to me. It's like this big sandbox, but it's cooperative. But what really drew me in when we played just the prototype yeah. was how the story is integrated into the gameplay and just the vast amount of decisions you get to make in that story and how the game drastically changes throughout that because you'll have this huge book, I mean huge book, yeah. and it has you flipping back and forth constantly and you'll get to new pages which will actually introduce new scenarios or change the scenario you're playing right in the middle of the game. And a lot of times it gives you options. So it almost felt like like Fallout when you're approached by somebody and they say, well you can go collect these things and give them to one faction or the other. Well the decision echoes throughout the entire rest of your campaign. Hmm. And yeah. I'm really excited, like you said, Seeing the final version of this and like what the final components are going to look like, I'm very excited for it. I had it. fun with that game too, and the artwork is astounding. Like we didn't realize how good it was until they started mm -hmm. sending us all the different like artwork pieces. It looks really cool. Yeah. Cool. So nice. my number nine is one that was announced, uh, I think maybe just earlier this year, maybe late last year. This is Alma Mater uh, from Eggerspiel, and it's sort of the follow up to Coimbra. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know how closely it's tied with that, but if you look at the pictures, oh, yeah. some of the characters on the cards are literally the same characters. I don't know sure. if that's placeholder, right. but it's definitely the same art style, and they've definitely given the idea that it's going to push a lot of the same sort of buttons that Coimbra did, and we all like that quite a bit, although mm. it doesn't get to the table no. uh, very often, but it is a very, very good game, and I'm looking forward mm -hmm. to this, and I love the way it looks. And Coimbra's still in my collection. Yeah. I still probably too. get rid of that. I played a lot, actually. I play, yeah. It's one of my go-tos. It needs an really? expansion, I think. Yeah. Yes, I would agree. All right, so my number nine is Halatau. Have you guys heard of that one? It's no, Okay, it's so it is a one to four player game, 90 to 180 minutes, so up to three hours. Uh, Lookout Games. So, listen. It's Lookout Games. I it's Uwe Rosenberg. Oh, I, the Rosenberg I didn't know how to yeah. pronounce it's it, but now I know what you're talking about. It's tile placement, it's worker placement, and it's farming. Like, how can you go wrong with, with any of that? But anyway, Halatau is a, I guess, a city that's located in Bavaria, or Germany. And basically what you're doing is you're using workers to rotate the crop tile. So if anyone knows anything about crops, you're planting in one season and planting a different field in a different season, you're going back and forth. How he's going to expand this into a three-hour game, I have no idea, but I'm on board. Anytime I mean, Uwe comes out yeah. with a big game, especially Lookout, I know what kind of games Lookout does. And they're the heavier Euro type of games, so I'm always into those styles. This almost feels like a follow-up to Caverna in some ways. Like it Please. Could be. Yeah, bring right. on a Caverna, bring on a, another Agricola, uh -huh. any of those type of games. So, cool. Very all cool. on board. So my number nine, it, it's, two, it's technically two games, because one's coming out before the other, because it, it hasn't come out yet or it's about to come out, it's right on the edge of coming out, and that's Disney's new villainous one, which I know we already got a copy of. Perfectly wretched. Right behind me. Uh, but obviously Marvel villainous, because those are both this hitting this year. This is fresh news right Very here. fresh news, very excited about it. Love the villainous series. I was literally talking to my dad about it on the way here. It's like, I, I can't even wait to play this one. We haven't played this one yet. Yeah. Uh, but then on top of that, Marvel coming. So I already had the one on the list. So I'm going to combine those into one and say I'm just excited for the new villainous content. So excited. 
I'm yeah. so excited for it. It is a gorgeous game. I it wanted is. to like it more than I did. That Marvel I enjoy it. Almost Maybe I'll try the Marvel game. Well, and they said, I mean, I thought I saw that Ravensbury replied on Twitter that they've added some new mechanics that'll be different for Marvel than they have, like, from what we've seen and from different types Disney. Of things so you're gonna be maybe because. that'll reinvigorate your maybe. interest. And I heard there's like an Avengers deck, like every, like all the villains have like one Avengers deck and the Avengers can go and fight diff like different people at the table. I think you're oh. making things up. Yeah. I agree. You are but, but what's your number eight? <laughs> <laughs> all right. My number eight, this is kind of a cheat. I'm, I'm going to list a couple different games here as my number eight. Wait, that's not legal. It is legal because these are it. these are all new versions of the game Detective um, Modern oh. Crime, which we played. Good point. We played a few, like well, last year we played that game, and it was very innovative and new. Um, it had some sticking points, and I think it's been a while. Uh, I want to see what he can come up with next. I want to see how he can expand that. He has three things coming out. There's a season one pack, which is like a set of short stories. Um, and then there is something called Dig Deeper, which is written by Rob Davio. And so that's part of the reason I'm super excited. Mm -hmm. It's an entirely new campaign storyline written by Rob that uses the detective me mechanics. And then another one called The Vienna Connection. So all three of these stories are coming out this year. And they're going to introduce new ways to interact with detective and probably some new technology things. I just really want to see how they build on what we've already played. I had fun with that game. Super I, excited for that. I never played it. It's we didn't. We didn't get it into it deep enough. I've been waiting for us to get back to it. Well, we need now to. We have it's the good. Yeah. 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 With this mm -hmm. content. All right. My number eight is also from Uve, mm -hmm. but it is not the game that you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. And this one is coming from a publisher who really hit it out of the park this year. Capstone. Did what? you know about this one? Wait. This one is called New York Zoo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and at first I looked at this and I thought, oh, that looks it looks awfully light. But then I looked into it and kind of gathered as much as I could about how the game plays. And it's given me a lot of Isle of Cats vibe to it. There's no drafting cool. in it, but you're moving around this board on your turn and doing one of two different things. You're either taking another polyomino piece where, that you place into your zoo, and when someone puts their final polyomino in their zoo or completes their zoo, that's the end of the game. Okay. Um, or, instead of taking a tile, you're moving this, I think, elephant around. You can take an animal and put it in a quadrant or an area of your zoo. So you're basically piecing the, puzzling the tiles in there or putting the animals in there for, I assume, the point scoring. Uh, and then you're just going around the table and you're moving this element like w elephant like one to three spaces each time But mm -hmm. you can either take a tile or an animal sounds kind of I mean very light game But it sounds like a lot of fun and it looks yeah. gorgeous. Well, it's like, the artwork's too. awesome yeah. It looks Ube. very sounds different the artwork wise for him and Capstone's been on a roll too. Yeah, so got to pay attention to it My number eight is cyberpunk 2077 afterlife the card game uh, So this was announced at Gen Con. It has no player count currently so I have no idea, but it's designed by Eric Lang. This takes place in the cyberpunk universe, and this is going to be huge around October because yeah. the PlayStation game's coming out. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of people are going to be driven to this game, but you're basically a fixer who's trying to engineer cyberpunks to the game. And the things that you have are going to build up your characters, and then those characters are going to basically retire, become veterans, and they're going to help other characters. So you're making a decision on where you want to sell those cards, buy those cards hmm. not a lot of other information out right. there yet you know i asked eric for some information but he didn't get back to me yet so i have no idea where this stands but i still think it's coming out in 2020 so and it's <laughs> cyberpunk mm -hmm. i said that three times now but yeah, i I'm totally excited. forgot about that release actually yeah. yeah yeah that should be exciting what's it called cyberpunk 2077 <laughs> All right, so after life, <laughs> she's 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 just stalling. She doesn't have a number eight. Hi, I'm done. No, my number eight. It's funny because I'm not sure if it's coming out this year. It was. We originally thought it was coming out at Essen. I was very excited. It was an Essen anticipated for me going into Essen. Got there, surprise. It's just a prototype, and the Kickstarter date's still kind of unknown. Right, I think it's about. launching sometime, and I would imagine it's going to come out this year if it does. But it's. So You've Been Eaten. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. From Ludi Creations, designed by Scott Alms, the zero to two player game. And so um, I really liked what I saw. I'm very excited about it. I wish there was anything anywhere <laughs> to tell me when I'm going to get this game. So it's a tentative eight because I don't really know, but I think it's happening this year based on everything we heard from him at and Essen. And it's hilarious because we sat down to Essen to play and the zero player is basically 
the game no. playing itself. Yeah, which means you which don't it, play. It, it, it's there's so somebody, dumb, it's hilarious, There's right? somebody, man, well, you I'm have to manage it. I'm looking forward to playing it at that player account. <laughs> it's very interesting to watch it unfold, but I, I like what it does, and it's Scott a cool is a favorite designer of mine, of course. Playing. And so, anyway, that's my eight. Seven. Seven. Mine seven is a game called My City, and this is by Kinesia, who has designed countless games. Blue Lagoon is a game that I've loved. Oh, yeah. And this is a, a tile placement game where you're building your own city by placing these tiles. However, it is a competitive legacy game. So you're going to unlock new ways to interact with your board. New elements of the game are going to be coming in during each mission. So I don't really know how it's going to unfold beyond the basic idea of it being a tile placement game where you're building your own city. Because he said that there's going to be some unique things that will happen over the course of like 10 or 12 different games. What's really interesting about this is that there's two sides to the board. You have a legacy side that lets you play through the campaign, but if you flip it over, you could just play a one shot and you could just do that at any time. Interesting. So it, it kind of offers both experiences. I like Kinesia's games, I love legacy games, and I like tile placement. So I think the way this one comes together, it could be very, very good. So we'll cool. see. Is that the first legacy game on our list so far? I think so. Yes. It's interesting. It'll be interesting to see how many legacy games are on these lists as compared to mm. last year's most anticipated because the legacies were rampant last yeah. year. This mm. was the year of legacy games. Or 2019, 19, there were so yeah, yeah. many. All right. My number seven is a game called Lions of Lydia. Have you heard of this one? No. Really? Nope. This I one is not. coming from Bellwether, who mm. we like for their fi the fishing games. Their fishing I've games. loved what they've done in the past. So this is one of those ones where I saw the publisher uh, logo and I was like, okay, I'll look into this further. Um, it's designed by Johnny Pack. Oh, is it? Yep. I oh, like Johnny cool. Pack. And it's not based in the American West or anything what? like that. It's not. No. It, nor is it fishing? This is about like the uh, origination of economy and currency. And it's, I know very little about it, but it looks really, really pretty. It looks like a amazing Euro, but it's from Bellwether. So it looks like, you know, the same sort of mechanics and uh, good games we've seen from Bellwether, but mm -hmm. with a very much of a Euro look. Very colorful Euro. I mean, he's not only a good designer, but he's a good developer as well. Yeah. And I know that the game, you know you know, going into a game designed by him that you're gonna have a very nice, tight design that you're mm -hmm. gonna enjoy. We, ha I don't know that we've played anything from him recently that we haven't felt that about. My seven is called Gollum. It's a one to four player game. It's 90 to 120 minutes from Cranio Creations. This is from the exact same team that did Grand Austria Hotel. I know a thing or two about this uh, game. Right, and <laughs> they obviously have some mechanisms that kind of borrowed from Grand Austria Hotel. It takes place in 19th century Prague, in which the rabbi created golems to help protect the city. And what you're doing is you are Kabbalist, who is creating a golem for the city as well. And it's a kind of an engine building which you're creating. And golems cre are fantasy? Well, I mean, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> but you're creating this golem, and you want to make him powerful, but not too powerful because he can start to wreak havoc on your city. So, that sounds cool. super excited about this one. It's got an incredible pedigree. I've always liked Cranio Creations with all mm -hmm. the games they create. So, Absolutely. it's a Euro game. Uh, so, that's my seven. That sounds awesome. I uh, missed that one. I'm definitely excited to check that out. Um, for me, it's Archice from Ankama. I like that one. This should be coming out in December, and I'm hoping that. It's so late did in the you year. Back it? I did. I'm hoping it's so late in the year that the factory stuff that's going on right now isn't going to affect that mm -hmm. delivery and push it into 2021. So I'm hopeful. Um, I liked what we saw when mm -hmm. we first saw it at yeah. Gen Con yep. last year. We got to do the preview. It's it's a very interesting way that the whole thing in the box and everything goes together, and you have this little backpack. So uh, I'm really excited for that one. It's I can't like wait to get it. It's a pseudo light campaign. Yeah. It's kind of a legacy game because your characters are going to build up through the campaign as you go. It's beautiful as well. Beautifully like, done. All right, my number six, I think we might have the first crossover. My number six is Golem as well. Okay. So <laughs> same thing as you. I mean, I see the team behind Grand Osher Hotel and that yeah. is an immediate buy for yeah. me. Like there is no way. I mean, these guys individually have collaborated on some of my favorite games and together have designed some of my favorite games. So, I mean, this is really a no-brainer. I mean, you already gave a pretty good job describing the game. They haven't released a lot about the actual, like, mechanics of how you're doing this yet. Yeah. I haven't really even seen a bunch, like, I look for pictures trying to see the game in progress, but I haven't even seen a lot. Yeah, yeah the one so. thing they mentioned is that it definitely takes a lot of its cues yeah. from Grand, Grand Austria, Austria Hotel. At least that's what the <laughs> description I read said. Yeah, well, that one's not on my list. <laughs> not yet. 
Mm. Right. Uh, but my number six is Viscounts of the West Kingdom. Good. This I'm is, glad someone included that. This is the next one in the West Kingdom series. Yeah. Uh, we've had a chance, a brief chance, I've not read the whole thing, to take a look at the rule book on this one. And it's like just like the other ones, changes things up quite a bit. This one works very, very differently, has a really cool I'm not even sure what all I can say here. If that's, I don't know if the rule book's out there. It's really cool. (laughs) More to come. (laughs) There's some cool mechanics. There's a card sliding mechanic where on your turn you're playing a card and it slides your row of cards down and one drops off. And the one dropping off might do something when it drops off. The other one is going to have some impact on your turn. And there's this big round board with this cool 3D structure in the middle that's like a castle. Uh, again, looks very similar to a lot of the other, uh, you know, visually, a lot of the other West Kingdom games. And these have really never disappointed. I mean, yeah, I mean, I have to say, I have huge expectations for that game. Being that Shim has continued to deliver quality games year oh, after yeah. year, it's amazing that he's using a lot of the same art, the same icons, some of the same gameplay, and keeps creating new things with them. So. It is. In fact, when he sent us the rule book, I thought, how does it feels like he went into the future, designed like all these games, and he comes back and he's just back. slowly <laughs> trickling them out. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. That's hilarious. Uh, my number six is called Trudvang Legends. It is a one to four player game, 60 minutes from CMON. It's a large campaign with a laundry list of CMON designers and developers, uh, namely Eric Lang has been involved in this. But it's based off this Swedish RPG, which I don't think anyone must really know about anyway, but because we're not big RPG players. The things that you do in the game are going to change the people that you interact with, the kingdoms that you encounter, and the very set of rules of like the gods. Mm -hmm. And that's done by the cards that kind of slide into these areas on the map. So as you upgrade areas or you don't do certain missions, the gameplay is going to change drastically. And it's a campaign game, it's a longer game with a lot of different, you know, stretch goals that came out with the Kickstarter. So I'm super excited about that. Eric showed us that maybe a year ago. At Gen Con. It's just a really, really intriguing game for me because I like those campaign, those lengthy campaign games. And this is a world that changes, which is really cool. Yeah, that changing thing you dig a lot. Yeah. Well, it, it does things I've never seen in a board game. And that's rare. Like, it lit, like the way you slap those cards in there, mm-hmm. like it's super cool and very satisfying because, it, like you said, I mean, not only does it change the board, some of those cards change the very Fundamental rules that you rules. play, yeah, yeah, hmm. very cool. From come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Yeah, it's whatever. not Simon anymore. It's, hard, yeah. it's a hard change. I'm gonna keep it. It's a hard, it's a hard, hard change. change. Yeah, for sure. I, we were uh, just having that debate the other day. Um, all right, my number six is another one I backed, and that is Super Fantasy Brawl from Mythic Games. This oh, is supposed yeah. to hit in March. I absolutely love this. We saw it at Gamma last year, and then we got to uh, do the preview as well. Mm -hmm. And then when Az was still with Mythic and he was here on set around Gen Con, we got to see a more final production of the miniatures. And then, of course, uh, at Essen, got to see all these wonderfully painted ones. Of course, you don't get those wonderfully painted ones right. in the Kickstarter. You but now I want to have yours painted. I need, like, I want to know. I want that guy to paint them. The guy that they use, oh, I yeah. want him oh, to yeah. paint them because they are so beautifully painted. But uh, my husband's excited to get it and paint them, and I, I liked it. It was a two-player game. It's you know this Super fun satisfying. fantasy, very satisfying game. Absolutely, w- great way to put it. So that's my number six. Cool. All right, my number five. I hope I'm pronouncing this right. It's Tekenyu, Obelisk of the Sun. This is a game from Daniel Tassini who did some of the best Euro games that uh, that I love so much. And this is like an interesting like obelisk mechanic where there's an obelisk standing up and like the sun rotates around it and makes shade on different parts of the board, which is super weird, but like it changes the way that these actions are being taken mm-hmm. based on whether you're taking them in the sun or taking them in the, the shade. shade. Yeah. So like, I, and I don't know much about the actual gameplay other than like it's dice placement. There's a bunch of these different God powers that you can trigger that are linked into Egypt, which I like that theme very much. Um, so I think this is a kind of an all-star team working on this yeah. game. So it should be really good. Born Dice continues to deliver quality Euro games. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, Rainer ran me through kind of a, not a demo, but he was like walking me through with kind of a very, very prototype board in front of us with mm-hmm. that whole obelisk mechanic. and. It, ha- it has a lot of great, just good old-fashioned Euro things going on. There's stuff all over the board that are different things that you can interact with and get points from. And yeah. Sounds yeah. cool. My number five, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, Fallout Shelter. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, Fallout Shelter from FFG, as you know, we're all into video games here, too. 
Uh, and while I've never really played Fallout Shelter, I am very familiar with it. My son, one of my sons has played it quite a bit. And I think of the Fallout franchise, mm -hmm. Shelter lends itself really well to yeah. the table. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and you know there's a video on this? Have you seen that? No. Oh yeah, FFG oh, yeah, did uh -huh. a live stream of there's it. A con there's yeah. some content of it that was from over in Europe. And uh, it is a really interesting gameplay and they have all these little tiny uh, miniatures for all of the different letters and special that you're using kind of uh, as workers to go out and do something. Hmm. So if you use the L in special, which I think is, is that luck? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. If you use that miniature and you're going to a place that benefits from taking a luck miniature there, you're going to get more. It's kind of like worker placement. You're getting stuff from the location if you use certain types in certain locations. And each of the miniatures are actually different sculpts for the different uh, qualities. And the app felt like a board game to begin yeah, with. Yeah, that's right. So. Yeah. Cool. Uh, my number five is Twa Dice. Uh, most people know Twa is one of my favorite games of all time. I love it. It's a really uh, thematic Euro game, which you're pulling dice from other players. But this one is a one to ten player game, and it's a roll and write. But it's Not from the zero, same. Not zero, though. Yeah, but it's <laughs> right. But it's from the same set of designers and from Pearl Games. So thematically, it does a lot of the same things that Twa does. You're you know you're using those dice for. Uh, allocating to your area, you're building the cathedral, you're developing different areas on the board, uh, using your workforce in different ways. Um, and I'm just really enamored with just Twa in general. I don't know much about the game itself and what you're doing, but it's kind of cool they're taking it to a roll and write, which I think everyone's kind of doing right now anyway. Mm -hmm. But it's Twa. All right. <laughs> what were you going to say? Four. Four. I thought you were going to say something, sorry. No, five. He, he it's was, five. We're it's on five, five still. Yeah. We're on five. Uh, my five is Sleeping Gods from Red Raven Games. This mm. is supposed to hit in May. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. We all, I believe, are excited for this one. Very much I'm so. not at all. Okay. I'm just kidding. I Three am. of the four of us are excited for this one. Uh, we got to a small taste of what, yeah. and when I say small, it was a massive amount of gameplay in that small taste that we got, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting into it. Yeah. We, we played for like three hours. I yeah. know. That was the... <laughs> was the small <laughs> taste. Right. A little taste. Yeah. Just a little taste of it. Yeah. All right. All right. Four, four right? We are on the four right. now. My number four is Role Player Adventures. This is a new game set mm. in the Role Player universe for those who have played Role Player. It's a dice drafting game where you're building out basically a D&D &D character. This is taking that a step further um, and actually kind of turning role player into a role playing game. So there's going to be the chance to just kind of play it out of the box or theoretically like make your character with role player and then play role player adventures with that character. And I think that the team has constantly surprised me. Mm -hmm. The expansions for role player have all been really yep. good. I've enjoyed the other games set in that universe. So I think that this has all the ingredients to be like just a huge crossover between like board games and role playing games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, they've done a great job with the expansion. Oh yeah. I wouldn't for sure. expect uh, anything less than awesome. Uh, my number four, four is what we're on. Mm -hmm. yeah, this four. is one I haven't played, but it has been sort of in the conversation for a while now, and that is um, the crew. This is the yeah. co op trick taking game from I've what played I understand. It. Mm -hmm. You've played it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And all I've heard is fantastic things yeah. about this. I think it was PAX last year, so shortly after Essen, I went, walked around and I ran into Tom from Dice Tower. I ran into uh, someone from BGG. And it was, oh, and... Uh, a guy. A guy. A girl. From, uh, from Bessier. <laughs> okay. All of them said the game that they were most enjoying at that time was The Crew. Like, mm -hmm. it was the top of their list, and I still haven't had a chance to play it. So I'm looking forward to the release here so that I can get yeah, it. Because I'm from, buying it for sure. Andrew from Board Game Quest picked it up, and he has the German one, the The Crew version, obviously. And it was his number one for last year because he he just well, loves it. People it's like it. Yeah. Great. Number one for like Yeah, I, I really popular. enjoyed it. I don't know that I would put... I Trick-taking games for me are good, but they're not super high yeah. on my list. But I did really enjoy mm -hmm. it. I like a good trick-taking game, mm -hmm. so that's my number four. My four is Alma Mater, which you already mentioned. It's a two to four player game, 90 to 120 minutes, Everett Spiel, all those uh, Italian designers, Coimbra. You already mentioned everything I need to mention about it. I'm just excited because it looks like Coimbra. I mean, it's got the same mm -hmm. artist. Uh, I really know nothing else about it. Yeah. I, I don't really think I need to because you I don't. just like them. And, and, and they wouldn't make it look so much like Coimbra if... Then have some It's got to be at it. least like that or better. Right. So that's the hope anyway. All right. Alma Mater. Four. My number four is Undaunted North Africa from Ooh. Osprey that's coming out oh, wow. in 
June. Uh, it's an expansion, obviously, for Undaunted, which I think we already liked to think it was on your underappreciated list. It's got tanks. It's got tanks. I know that because I looked I'm at really it. <laughs> I'm really excited about it. It's funny because I was talking to my dad about Undaunted because it was on the Motley Fool guys. They do this podcast and they like the guy, one guy likes board games, so he'll go talk about his top games or and Undaunted was on there. So my dad starts asking me about it. And now he's picking it up and he said, oh, did you know there's expansion? I was like, I do now. Thanks on my list because uh, I am excited for the game and I wish we'd played it more. But uh, yeah, I'm going to be playing it with my dad. Have it right upstairs. <laughs> Just tell me. Three. All right, my number three is Alma Mater, so I'm right with you guys. All right. Now, so this, what they announced, this they called it the sequel to Coimbra. So like this- Oh, they did. That's what they, they're calling it, the sequel to Coimbra. And from the vague rumors that I've been hearing is that this is not the last game in that series either, that there could potentially be a third one as well. So I'm, I'm kind of interested to see how this is gonna take place. It, it seems to take place in the same world as Coimbra, if not even maybe in Coimbra. So, hmm. just the fact that I, I don't think it's it's intentional. You said it may be placeholder. It's all the same like characters you're going to see like Shem does. You'll have all the same iconography, um, a lot of the same tracks and methods. Again, I don't know any more about how the game plays than you do. But this was like when they announced this, I was just on board with it instantly. Yeah. I still like Quimbra. I mentioned it earlier. I still play that game. Yeah, just talking about it just the last few minutes ago uh, makes me want to play it again. It's been a while since it I really has. Yeah. yeah, probably been over a year. All right, number three. This one I had a chance to demo at Gen Con last year, 2019. This is Dead Reckoning from AEG, uh, from John D. Clare. Mm. This is his next in the card crafting system. And I'll be honest with you, I haven't always been a big, huge fan of the card crafting. Mm. Um, it can be fiddly at times, but I think every new game that they've he's done with it has been an interesting evolution and something that just gets more and more interesting to me. I liked Edge of Darkness last year, although in retrospect, I think it's almost, for me, too much of a game. There's a lot of game there. Dead Reckoning, from my limited experience with it, was very straightforward and very thematic, and it made it just made the crafting feel uh, like a lot more, there was a lot more sense to it. Mm -hmm. you were travel, you're pirates, you're traveling out, you're physically moving your ship out to these islands, and the islands are where you're getting new cards to add to your, uh, to your card crafting. So, the whole idea of going out there, I've always enjoyed the idea of moving things, picking things up and putting them in. It takes some of the abstract nature out of the card crafting and makes it a little bit more literal. And I really liked it. And of course, he had some really cool um, tumbling cubes and dice involved, just like he did with Edge of Darkness too. I, I like the card crafting system. I just think it needs to become, as you said, less fiddly. Like mm -hmm. the whole thing at the end of the game, you have to break them all apart and put them away. If they can find out a way to make that I don't even know how, but make it easier, but also to make those characters kind of build up. Like the one game they had that had the uh, the characters added weapons to them and different hats to them. It was like the, a trick-taking game. Trick -taking yeah, game. yeah. Like, I uh -huh. like that aspect of it, but I just don't feel heroes? like it's been mm -hmm. custom heroes. I love custom heroes. It just heroes. needs to be done in a very specific way that I'm going to like. And you, you, I mean, you raved about that game last year, Gen Which Con. Oh, Dead, Dead Reckoning, Reckoning was yeah. the biggest surprise that I had. I really enjoyed my time with it. Well, there you go. Uh, my three, as I mentioned, it's Tecanio. It's the Obelisk of the Sun, one to four player game, board and dice. Uh, you already said Daniel Tassini, who did Zolkin and Teotihuacan, but it's also David Turtsy. Yeah. Uh, so both of those are really good designers. Turtsy usually works with Mind Clash. Um, so when those two guys come together, it's going to be really uh, special. You have, as you mentioned, you have the obelisk. You have six gods around that cast shade on different areas. Um, it's a Euro game. Uh, it's board and dice, which again, we already mentioned, has some really good Euro games. So I have high expectations for it. It's not super it's heavy from what I understand. It's more in the medium to heavy range. It's got to be less than Tristan It's not. It's no Tristan <laughs> <laughs> All right. Three. Three for me is Tiny Epic Dinosaurs from Game Lynn Games. Uh, this is supposed to come out in July. Of course, I, all these dates feel with Kickstarters like they might vary because of the factory stuff. But as long as it comes out this year, I'll be happy. I'm very excited. I'm a, probably maybe even setting the bar too high because I it's a worker placement and it does all the things I like and it might replace galaxies, but it might not. We'll see what happens yeah, with the final. You're gonna run into a situation where you're pitting tiny epic games against tiny epic tiny games. Tiny versus tiny. Um. Uh, well, but I think it, you know, this is time and it's just kind of showing the work of Scott Alms and Gamelin over the years of 
taking these games and doing interesting things with them and it was time for a really good worker placement and I think that's what I saw in it and I'm excited to see the final. Plus I think they've made some changes since the last time. Yes they have yeah so better. I got a chance to see some of it but the, the two player is what I'm really excited to see because that's what I play Tiny Epic at the most is two player and I really want to see how the two player plays out. Speaking of two, two. All right my number two is Perseverance Castaway Chronicles. This is by David Tursey and this is yes. with Mind Clash. I talked about this game because it was going to be at Essen. They were going to—I was hoping to get a chance to see some more from it. But from what I understand, they didn't have a huge presence uh, at Essen, so I still don't know a lot about this game, other than just the premise of of being humans traveling through time, kind of trapped in the world of dinosaurs, and you are drafting dice, which are basically people riding these dinosaurs, and you're sending them out to do different things in like a Euro game. And I know this- Sounds crazy. You said that last time I talked about this. It literally sounds like you're making this up. That's what you said. We saw this at Essen and the setup was immense. Like it was a major board with miniatures all over the place. It was crazy. Very pink. It was, it's very colorful. It's a very colorful game. And there is a lot of different mechanics at play here. This kind of feels like a culmination of a lot of his other designs. Mm -hmm. And then of course, Mind Clash being the same company that brought us games like Anachrony and mm -hmm. Tricarian. Yeah. So I'm expecting this to have a high Higher, level yeah. of complexity and depth to it. Yeah, cool. All right, I won't spend too much time. We've talked about this already. My number two is Gollum. Uh, as soon as I saw, yeah. when I was looking through the list, I saw Cranio Creations. I looked at the handful of games they had and they had a handful mm -hmm. uh, for 2020. I looked into this one and it's like you both already said, as soon as I saw that it was from the Grand Austria Hotel team and it took its cues from that game, I was like, okay, I'm in. Because I love, I mean, we all love that game and I love it at any player count. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. just going to say it right now. Yeah, I don't play mind four playing it at four players. That's a lot, though. <laughs> uh, my number two has been mentioned, Sleeping Gods, one to four player, 60 to 840 minutes. I. 840 minutes? <laughs> it's Red Raven Games. For player, uh, right? Man, we played this game last year, and we literally, as you mentioned, had to pull ourselves away from uh -huh. the game to stop playing it. It was so good. <laughs> I, I, you know what? Above and Below was just an okay game for me. Near and Far was a better game, but it started to drag about midway yeah. through. This game, I could not pull myself away. Like mm. It's set in the 1920s. You were on a stranded ship called the Odessa. Uh, you're trying to find your way back. You're trying... It's a... It's a campaign storybook just like those style of mm -hmm. games but there's two things that really interest me Chunky. about this game that i absolutely loved uh one of those was the exploration and discovery in the game mm. like you can go anywhere oh, anything yeah. you want to do but it's like dark souls like if you go to the wrong place you're gonna die don't die but <laughs> the other thing i really loved and this was the biggest draw for me and i think the best thing about the game is this communal pool of items that we had like we were constantly contributing to items, but we had a limited number of actions. So my actions could only go in specific ones, but I wanted you to have actions. And I wanted you to have actions to also take actions on these cards. So we were using cards and those cards would be limited. Like we wouldn't have specific things to do and you're gonna be upgrading to the game. It was so much fun. Like it's easily the best Ryan Lockett game that I've played. Oh. I'm so excited to play this one. Mm -hmm. So, Sleeping Gods. So, my number two, I'm very lucky uh, for this game because I actually get to see the back end of it and the development a little bit and how it's been progressing, and that is Dice Throne Adventures yep. from Roxley. I get the opportunity to work with them. Uh, and so, I've been watching and seeing how it's changed since we did the round one for it and the preview and all that fun stuff. And I have to, I can't say Dice Throne Adventures without saying also season one rerolled yeah, because course that's coming out together and that just seeing the season one characters in the new format and also the two new heroes are awesome. I got a chance to play them at PAX Unplugged. I actually have a pre-production copy at home to check out. I'm really excited about and uh, it's just, it's, it's a great game and it's taking one of my favorite games. It's taking it to a new place and giving me a new way to play it with more people. I'm so excited for this game. It was fun. I like that game a lot. Number one? We are to the number we one. We are to Any, the number does one. Does anyone want to say anything special before we go to our number one? Nothing? Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number one for me. No Hi, Ryan's Mom. <laughs> no surprise here, Sleeping Gods for me. Yeah. This is a game that fulfills, I think, the promise that Above and Below and Near and Far made for me, that it was going to be dropped into this huge narrative experience and just get to explore this world. And if you think we're overselling this game, we're not. Like, yeah. there are so many things like this is a huge storybook map and you're we actually could have a map in front of us that's broken down into little grids 
and each of those grids refers to a page in the storybook. So when Jeremy says you can go anywhere, I mean, he means anywhere. This is like, you know, when you go first play uh, Legend of Zelda and you see the open world map. It's, I mean, it, that's how it felt. It and it's funny, you said Dark Souls, he said Legend of Zelda. I remember Final Fantasy where you like <laughs> right, go yeah. into an area and you're like, nope, Don't that's not where I'm place. supposed to go. Right, and, and there were some moments and some things we discovered even in our like three or so hour play that just like, Whoa. Gave me, yeah, that woke yeah. me, that gave me chills and goosebumps and it, it does exploration in a really cool way where you can like, you can find keywords and you might find a keyword and have no idea. You're like, okay, I have chains now. What are we going to do with these chains? Maybe somewhere along the line we'll need them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So try it. If you like any of Red Raven's games or if you like narrative games, this has so much depth to offer. I think we're going to be playing this wow. for a while. Yeah, one of the other things, unique things I want to say about the game too is that you do have to find 14 totems. And I didn't know this the first time we played the game to basically win it. But there's more than 14. Mm -hmm. There's several of them. So the, your path through the game yeah. is going to be completely different from another player's. So you're going to try to platinum it? <laughs> right. <laughs> and every total. Achievements. <laughs> cool. That's what it sounds like. Right. Yeah. He's a big possible. video game. Right. All right, Good my one. number one. Uh, I know Jeremy knows what I'm going to say. I absolutely know what you're saying. Um, I'm surprised it hasn't been on anyone else's list thus far, but my number one is Castles of Tuscany. Yeah. Yeah. This is... Feld's next game, and we just, uh, when did it, it was December that the image of this started floating around? Yeah. yeah. Um, and everyone who's a fan of Castles of Burgundy just went crazy, including myself. I know very little about this game, other than it's from Stefan Feld, and it's apparently a follow-up to Castles of Burgundy. So that's it. The end. <laughs> that's all you get. <laughs> like I really don't. I just played Castles of Burgundy for the first for time the in first December. Time. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh really? Mm -hmm. I still haven't played that new the new version. The new edition that's, of that. Ooh, that's the one game, that I played. Yeah, but there's a lot. That's of, the one that I played. Oh really? Mm -hmm. A lot of expansion <laughs> stuff. I want to try some have. of that expansion yeah. stuff, but I like. There's not much to share about this game other than it, hopefully it's coming this year, and I can't wait for it. My game, I don't know if it's coming out this year, so I may have cheated. It's called Pandemic Legacy Season 3. It says um, it's coming out this it year. It does say it's coming uh -huh. out this year, though we've heard literally nothing about it. I, I, I can't say enough about Pandemic just as a legacy game. Like, one was good, but I loved two. Two was such a so good you liked game. two better than one. I liked I two better than one. I heard it the one, opposite. Just because there's I've so heard the many. opposite. Oh, no, no, no. I, I loved two. And I can't imagine what Rob is working on um, with Matt on what they're going to change, what's going to, I, I have no idea, but it doesn't matter because I had such a great experience with that. I've played through both versions with my wife and it's been fun. It's been a, a game where we can strategize with someone I don't typically play games with, at least these type yeah. of games with. And she was really into these games as well. So I'm super excited. I don't know if it's Gen Con, Essen, or the tail end of the year. It may not even be this year. But yeah, it almost made it onto I'm my list. It is. I, I just, I wasn't, I, I don't know that it's coming out this year. Yeah. Um, I talked to Rob about it at Gen Con last year, and of course he couldn't say a lot. Being very coy. I mean, he couldn't say a lot about it. He did say that the like how different two was from one. Yeah. He said that three should be it will be just, just as, as different, different from Good. two. It's a roll which, move. <laughs> <laughs> that would be very different. Um, but I'm with you. I thought two was. I thought just two was way better. So I, I never super. played one. Yeah. And we got Alicia and I. We played it as a couple too. And I have mm -hmm. to say, if you haven't played this game, try it as a couple. This yeah. is, I found it to be a it great is. couples game. We were hooked, and we. Uh, for a while, anyway, yeah. we got to May without losing, and then we lost our first, and then we kind of <laughs> lost interest. Yeah. So it's funny because, like, there was my like early in the industry and coming to Gen Con, and bringing Chris to Gen Con with me. I kept showing him Pandemic Period, and I'm like, there's a kid in my robotics club that was playing basically the same thing on his phone, and then I saw it in board game form, and I was like, oh, that looks fun. And he, we got it. it, it took him a while to warm up to it, and he eventually he got it for me for Christmas, and so we played it. So I was like, we should get Legacy when it came out, it'll be great. And then he saw that it was tearing cards, and this was obviously at the beginning of yeah. this whole kind mm -hmm. of getting used to that and becoming more popular, and he refused to play it. So I've never played Pandemic Legacy, it's a game I really wanna play, so I'm looking forward to it for that as well. It's not, not on my list because I didn't know when it was coming for What sure. is your number one? Marvel, Marvel, Marvel uh, champion stuff. Yeah. I, I could say it, the individual packs, but the fact is, I'm just so excited for more content. I'm excited for what kind of content's going to come out because they're going to they can expand it forever. X Men, X Men, X Men. Um, but the fact that we're going to get the scenario, 
well, not scenarios, but the campaign, the campaign element coming. Yeah. And I and I don't care what version of campaign it is. It's just giving me something else and a different way to play it and bring it to the table. I enjoy it. It's one of the games that's hitting my table the most anymore. And um, you know, it's like I, it's in my top three for a reason. I mean, that's the, the model of the LCG is really cool because you get the cards that you want, and it keeps the game invigorated. Like Cyberpunk, I talked about that mm -hmm. game already, but it's probably going to be a one and done. If you mm -hmm. don't like the game, you're just going to move on. Yeah. If you like Marvel, you just keep playing it, like, forever. Yeah. It's in a massive oh, yeah. amount of content. I yeah. mean, forget the campaign thing, just the stuff they've already announced yeah. that hasn't come yet. Yeah. There's a lot of that. Yeah. You know, Thor, Doctor Strange, Black Widow. I haven't even know, picked up my Goblin or yeah, yeah. my Goblin yet. I still have to pick up Goblin, and we've got Wrecking Crew, we've got all the things you just mentioned. So, but I am uh, out of all the Marvel stuff. I'm more excited for the potential of what they haven't announced yet. I'm hoping they do like kind of the Disney villainous thing where they yeah. flip and give us Marvel, mm -hmm. and we're going to get X Men, X Men, X Men, X Men. But also just this the campaign element. I'm so excited. So, all the Marvel properties, which one are you looking forward to most, Kira? Hmm. Maybe Marvel Champions. X? I can't imagine. No, she's uh, X Men. <laughs> X Men. Yeah, oh. I, Marvel Champions. I, the only reason I didn't put it on my list is because I, I couldn't really pick one thing. I just yeah. like all of it. But I've heard the the story pack um, is supposed to come with even new heroes too. So that was something that they announced. I, they yeah, said I new heroes add new villains. So I don't know how that's going to work, but they haven't even talked about beautifully. I'm sure the heroes that are coming <laughs> in with that. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. They're killing it. It's exciting. Yeah. So we don't have a lot of honorable mentions, but we do have some maybe. Yeah. We have to talk about. Yeah, give, I want. Give, you give. Let's, let's go the reverse. Let's go reverse give one order. game of honorable mention that you may. Uh, have. Or more, whatever you want. To I do. don't. We'll cut you You know off. the name of it. You'll you'll remind me mm. what it is. But mm. the w new next Wingspan expansion. Uh, oh, Oceana. Oh, Oceana. 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 Yeah. yeah. I I like more Wingspan. I still think we need a Dragon Wingspan fantasy wag Dragon Wingspan, and I'll be happy. But Are you about to say wagon? Wagon. Ooh. Wagon drinks. I wish I wished my words. Wagon drinks span. Yeah, I, I I'm excited. Wingspan again is one those games that yeah. comes to our table often it's easy for me to introduce to people so having more content for it just to flesh it out further I think is gonna be great uh, I, I'm not gonna mention anything you guys already talked about but there's a couple games Divinity Original Sin which is from a brand new design oh, yeah. house which looks kind of cool I love Divinity I demoed it I have it no packs. idea if it's good or not um, Kemet which is 2021 Ankh and Dark Ages I'm really excited for Dark Ages actually that should be on our front porch right now because we're doing a Kickstarter yeah. preview yeah. for it but it's a um, it's a it's a sandbox civilization game, which is yeah. my wheelhouse, like like Civ. Mm -hmm. So, so we'll yeah, see no, that's exciting. Yeah. Well, I I didn't have any honorable mentions, but I just read about this one before I came over here today. I know very little about it, but it is a Back to the Future game. Oh uh, yeah, called, Chris Leader. Uh, no, Back to the Future, and it's from Prospero Hall. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. And it's co-op, and you play as we're getting two Back to the Future. Marty games. McFly. Uh, Doc Brown, the dog, Einstein, and maybe his mom, I'm not sure. But you're co-oping all these different things back in the 1950s to get through it. So if this has anything like it, uh, Horrified going on in terms of mechanics, mm -hmm. I'm down. Like in my opinion, I, I'd be up for at least a few more games that are effectively just like Horrified, but with a different property. Yeah, Back to Future needs more IPs. I remember a card game they did several years ago yeah. that was kind of. No one's hit it really. Nope. Well, isn't nope. Chris Leader doing one as well? I thought so. Maybe there's two, or maybe he's one. involved really? in that one. That I'm not one. sure, but I I remember that he's doing a Back to the Future game, and I was excited for it because we need or a Back to the Future. Or you just spoiled game. one that no one knows about. <laughs> sure, maybe. <laughs> I will say that Prospero Hall is has changed. The way I approach IP games. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. even had talked on Chit Chat before about the trepidation that comes with IP games, but they've had what six or seven IPs in a row that I think they've they've all been good decent, or, if good not or good great. or great. Yeah. They games. approach them correctly. In fact, this one, the artwork, they didn't have a lot of art, but the box itself, you could tell uh, this is not going to have photorealistic pictures of you know scenes from the movie, sure. which I'm never a fan of. It looks like it was all original art. In fact, the artwork looked almost Saturday morning cartoonish mm -hmm. in yeah. terms, but not Wasn't too kiddie. Wasn't there kitty. a cartoon? On oh, that Back to the Future cartoon? Was, I don't remember that. that. Happened, but. <laughs> That's true. What are your honorable All right, so I have one on, I'll name one. It's called The Shivers. And this is coming out. It's like coming to Kickstarter soon. It's supposed to deliver later this year. Mm -hmm. The reason I'm interested in this is because it plays in a series of pop-up books. Yeah. Like each location you go to pops up and it's like a full three-dimensional board and you're moving across this board and it's like a cooperative game it has kind of a stranger things vibe like kids on bike style kind of game the shivers is this like it's called Goose, the shivers 
I mean, a little goosebumps. I think Jeremy little, Howard's covering it. It looks yeah, yeah. really yeah. cool. And I've seen, you know, their mock-ups and prototypes of what this game looks like. If if they can deliver on this premise of these cool pop-up books to play with, like, that is... Interesting. That is a, he would be a huge family game, I think. Cool. Very cool. Well, that is our top ten. Sorry that we got it to you so late in the year, but uh, let us know what you think about our list. Make your comments below to let us know what is on your top ten most anticipated for 2020, and we will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.